Hello and welcome to another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews. I'm going to try to keep this video short today. Today's video is another edition in the series on why do I want this gun or why did I buy this gun. Today we're going to be talking about single action only revolvers. And I have two examples of that here. On the left is the Ruger Wrangler in the bronze Cerakote finish. This has Ultimount wood grips on it. And on the right is a Ruger new model single six convertible. So that came with a 22 long rifle and a 22 Winchester Magnum cylinder. Both of them are single action only, which means every time you want to fire a round, you have to cock the hammer before you can fire the round. It is not double action where you pull the trigger and it automatically advances the cylinder, cocks the hammer, and then fires. So why did I want these guns or why did I want this type of gun? Well, I think it's pretty simple. Western movies uh, and just historical firearms in general. You look back to the, Colt, the, the old Colt single action army. You go back in any of the old Western movies, the Peacemaker, you know, uh, what did they call it? The Equalizer. They called it many, many different names. But realistically, going way back in the day, a six shot revolver that could hold multiple rounds of ammunition. And by firing it, you have to cock the hammer to get it ready to fire, which advances the cylinder, puts a round in line with the chamber and the firing pin, and then you pull the trigger, which drops the hammer, fires the round. And, you know, going from the old single shot uh, muzzle loaders or a six shot muzzle loader with caps on the back of it, cap and ball revolvers, this was a huge step up because you could simply open the gate, you could load six rounds in there. And again, typically, if you look back historical, a lot of people only loaded five. Because before the days of that transfer bar safety that's in there, and again, I talked about that in my charter arms video, but before the days of that transfer bar safety, if you struck the back of this hammer hard enough, it would go off on a live round. So they would basically load one round, skip a chamber, and then load four. So they would have five rounds in the chamber, and they would effectively have the hammer resting on an empty cylinder when they needed to fire, they could cock it, it would be on a live round, and then they would have five shots. And again, that was just because inherently the older revolvers didn't have that safety function built into them. So there was a lot of times when it would fall out of the holster, it would drop on the ground and shoot the person that had it. Or, you know, if they're riding around and it smashes something on the belt, there is the chance that the hammer could fall and set a round off shooting the owner in the leg. So these are much improved over the original design because they do have that hammer block built into them. Both of these are rim fire, and you might ask yourself, well, you know, movies, you'd have 45 long Colt, you'd have, I don't know, 32, you'd have all these different calibers in the old Wild West. You can still get single action revolvers in just about any caliber you want. Why did you buy these two? Well, for me, <laughs> the answer is simple. It's a lot cheaper to shoot 22 than any of those older cartridges. Um, and I know you can get 44 Magnum and you know, 44 special and all the modern cartridges in single action revolvers. But again, for me, not having to buy another caliber, having something that's fun to shoot, it's still a historical type firearm um, and something in that same realm. So again, when it comes to single action revolvers, movies that I've seen over the years, I mean, countless, countless, countless Westerns that have them in them. Uh, the Angel and the Bad Man, The Quick and the Dead, Once Upon a Time in the West, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Then you have some of the most recognizable people in history, like John Wayne. He has been in so many Western movies, and he typically, in all the older ones, carried a single-action revolver. How can you not appreciate the guns that he uses in his movies? Then we have Once Upon a Time in the West, with Charles Bronson and Henry Fonda, where they both carry single-action revolvers. It was basically the quintessential handgun of the time period. We can't forget Clint Eastwood in movies like Fistful of Dollars for a Few Dollars More, Hang Em High, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. He was one of the original American badasses of the Western movie scene. He was in a lot of movies called Spaghetti Westerns, and boy, was he awesome to watch. One of my all-time favorite scenes in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly is when the character Tuco goes into the gun store to buy a gun. He's presented with a bunch of lesser quality revolvers and promptly throws them all on the floor. Then the store clerk takes out the best models that he has, and Tuco takes three of them apart and pieces together one Colt single-action army. 
The funny thing is you can see that throughout the scene he's actually putting in parts from a percussion cap revolver and one that has cartridges, which were interchangeably used throughout the movie. He then proceeds out the back of the store to test fire shooting it, shoots the targets, and then shoots the targets in half. After which, he robs the clerk, takes the gun and the cartridges, and as much money as the guy had, and walks off. Another great western, which actually there was two versions of it, The Quick and the Dead. This one came out in 1995, and it had Leonardo DiCaprio, Sharon Stone, Gene Hackman, Russell Crowe, Lance Henriksen, and a few other big names in it. And it was just a really cool, fast action pace movie. And the original movie, The Quick and the Dead, came out in 1987, and that one had Sam Elliott in it. Throughout that movie, most of the time, Sam Elliott was carrying a lever action rifle, but there were a few scenes with Kate Capshaw where she was carrying a single action revolver. We can't leave out good old Tombstone with Val Kilmer, Kurt Russell, Sam Elliott, and Bill Paxton. This is just a classic Western movie, some of the best gunfighting action ever, documenting Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp and their run-in at the OK Corral. Some of the best lines in a movie ever with I'm Your Huckleberry, some of the best gunfighting and gunplay that I've ever seen. I just absolutely love this movie and watch it any chance I can. Another lesser-known movie about Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday is The Hour of the Gun, starring James Garner as Wyatt Earp, Jason Robards, Robert Ryan, John Voight, and Michael Tolan. It was meant to be a more historical look into the events around the gunfight at the OK Corral and the events that happened afterwards, with Wyatt Earp's two brothers being killed and then him deputizing people to go out and chase down the bad guys. It's a great movie. As I said many times, James Garner is one of my favorite actors, and Jason Robards also does a great job in this movie. Newcomer into the westerns is The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, who is a singing cowboy, really pretty cocky, and he was rather underestimated by people in town. But it's his cockiness that really got him killed in the end of the movie. I won't spoil it for you, but the gunfights in this movie are comical in the way that they're done, even though it's kind of gory how he shoots people, but realistically the movie was done really well and it's just one of those fun movies to watch. You know, there are so many different movies, different actors that had them out there. They're just the cool pistol that somebody would have as a sidearm. They might have a lever action or a shotgun with them when they're riding their horse, but they always had a single action pistol on their hip. And you know, you see the guys out there with these spinning them around and, and throwing them in the holsters. I've tried to do lots of spinning on these, but I'm too worried about dropping it um, because, again, I can't replace these if I break them. So I don't want to spin it around a whole lot. But, you know, every once in a while, you do tend to fool around with these a little bit just to have that same feel if you were a cowboy to get out there and shoot and, you know, fling these things around, throw them back in your in your holster and things like that but it's just one of those quintessential firearms it's very historical they've been around since the 1800s in various different fashions various different length barrels various different calibers configurations um, but in general they all function very similarly where you have to cock the hammer and pull the trigger to get it to fire uh, and they're just a lot of fun to shoot i mean i have a couple of videos with my ruger wrangler in it it may not be a precise target model because it has fixed sights on it and it basically has a trench rear sight. So if you look at it going down, this is your rear sight. It's a notch, kind of like a J-frame revolver. And then you have a fixed front sight on here. And, you know, from the factory, these can be off a little bit. I think mine shoots to the side a tiny bit. But for what it is, I mean, these you can get for between like $179 and $225 usually all day. They come in many different colors, silver, black, gold. They make bird's head models now with a shorter grip that just curves in. They make um, the bird's head model has a little bit shorter barrel on them. The Ruger Wrangler is not the least expensive single action 22 revolver. You can get the Heritage Rough Rider and I think Diamondback and a couple other companies make a single action 22 revolver but this is what I bought. So I got this one. I like the Cerakote gold finish on it. It looks pretty good. And I didn't like it when I first bought it as much, but I had held the silver model, the black model, and the, um, the bronze one all side by side. And to me, the bronze looked the best. And then once I got these Altamont grips, they really pick up the light well. So they give it a, a great look. They're a little bit thicker than the standard grips that were on this, so it feels really good in the hand. 
It's a natural pointing gun. When you hold it, it just feels normal to just grab it in the middle and hold it. It always seems to point really well. So love the design of these. I love the um, the cost of these. They're very well made for the money. The Wranglers, they only make in 22 long rifle, but the nice thing about that, you can shoot 22 short, 22 CB long, 22 long, and 22 long rifle out of these. You can shoot low velocity, high velocity, subsonic, lead, um, plated, anything out of a revolver. That's the beauty of having a revolver. You can shoot, you know, 22 shot out of these as well. So they're very versatile firearms when it comes to that. And then the single six, the nice thing about the single six, they're more... Uh, made like a full-size heavy-duty revolver in a larger caliber. So these have an all-steel frame. The um, the Wrangler, I think, either has a zinc alloy frame or an aluminum alloy frame, so they're a lot lighter, which is why they can make them a lot less expensively. This one has an all-steel frame, steel hammer, steel cylinder, steel barrel, and these, obviously, you can get in much longer barrel configurations. This is a 6.5-inch barrel configuration, and just like the Wrangler, this one with the 22 long rifle cylinder, you can shoot 22 short, 22 long, um, high velocity, low velocity, subsonic shot shells, plated round nose, whatever you want out of this. But the nice thing about this one, this also came with a 22 Winchester Magnum rim fire cylinder. So just by cocking the hammer, opening the loading gate, actually, just by opening the loading gate, pressing the takedown pin and pulling this pin out, you can pop the cylinder out and replace the cylinder with a 22 Winchester Magnum rimfire cylinder. Pop that in, and now I can shoot any 22 configuration of rimfire, whether it's long rifle, short, long, or 22 Winchester rimfire magnum, and makes it a little bit more versatile. And again, it makes it a good pair with a either a 22 long rifle um, rifle like a lever gun like the Henry and again going back to the cowboy action movies carrying the Henry H001 with this guy would be awesome because you can shoot short long long rifle out of both of them or if I throw the Winchester Magnum rimfire cylinder in this I could carry this out with me in the field with my Ruger American in 22 Winchester rimfire magnum and have two guns that shoot the same thing. I've talked about same caliber firearms before. I think it's a really good deal, uh, a really good idea if you had a situation where you had, you know, an SHTF situation, or even if you're out hunting and you're squirrel shooting or something like that, to have a pistol that has the same caliber as your rifle when you're out there. You know, if you shoot at something and it falls down and it doesn't die, you don't want to necessarily take your rifle and shoot it at close distance, but you could have 22 shorts in your pistol and dispatch something that wasn't dead up close if you needed to do that. So that's just a little bit of a short video on why I like this type of gun, the single action revolver, and the two versions that I have here on the table today. They're both Ruger rimfire models, but it's the same thought process whether or not you have a 44 Magnum or a 32 Long Colt or a 32 Smith & Wesson or whatever revolver that you want in a single action. These are just the two that I happen to have, and I wanted them because I wanted the style of revolver, but I wanted to be able to shoot them with inexpensive ammo and use them alongside other guns that I already have. So thanks for watching Cranky Gun Reviews. This has been another short installment on why I like this gun or why did I want this gun. The single action revolvers. Make sure you have a great day. Support your two-way rights. God bless America. And remember, when somebody asks you to give up some of your freedom for the greater good, remind them that freedom is the greater good. Have a great day.